Okay, so a quick trip around this um, Eurorack. Um, as I said before, I, my attempt was to try and construct a, a Eurorack where I, at the cheapest possible price. So therefore, I set myself a limit of no one module uh, more than £100, in fact, if preferably below £50. Uh, and also, as you'll see as we go through this, a lot of do-it-yourself and um, home-built modules um some using some quite simple ideas others um taking circuits that are available all over the internet uh and i think even uh where i find myself today i think uh, i'm in a good place in the sense that i can seem to make quite you know uh, complicated patches and i think i've pretty much fulfilled the the task of making this this rack um at the minimum of cost so the top row here is, um, let's go and have a look at that first. So we have here a clock divider, this one here. Now this is uh, constructed around a 4017 CMOS chip, which basically uh, is used for, um, it's a decade counter, and it can be used for uh, doing a sequencer, or in this case I'm using it for doing clock divisions. Um, then we have uh, this little, uh, micro sequencer here that was built as a kit and put together um, it's not designed to fit in your rack as you see it's a little self-contained circuit ball but I've just got it held onto the face plate here with some um, velcro strips and uh, also the power for that is coming from the power supply so therefore you don't have to worry with uh, the battery power for it or what have you and then we have these three units here which are all very similar in the sense that they're all based on the, uh, the similar circuit. Now this is a uh, LED chaser circuit that uh, was a kit um, that you could buy in various electronics outlets. I actually bought these uh, from Rapid Electronics who was selling the kit, if I, if I remember correctly, for about seven pound. Um, and to be honest, it's worth the seven pound just for the components that you get in the kit. I mean, I've added my own LEDs on some of these although you do get the LEDs in the kit they're normally red in the kit um, sockets I would have to have added and the uh, knob for the speed on the original kit there are micro pots that you'd have on the circuit board um, so it was it's very much designed as a fun circuit for people to experiment with but it actually works very well in this now I'm powering these with the uh, 12 volts so therefore the these are effectively gate outputs here and they uh, would um, give me a 12 volt out which is quite hot obviously but it works very well as a gate and also i've also they've got a 555 timer on there for you know for setting the sequence internally or i've wired it in such a way that the signal can either come out or you can take an external signal in but because they're operating on the 12 volt rails uh, the the clock signal has to be quite hot going in as well so they will very they'll work very much amongst themselves but um, if you try and feed them with a normal clock signal it's, it's not normally got enough oomph to trigger these but that's fine they I tend to use these more as um, either standalone or whatever so if I just show you how they operate is you've got two buttons here one of which um, tr sets the uh, step to fire when the uh, clock pulses um, and the other one sets the uh, these outputs to uh, clear so if I have the, the tempo turned slightly down, now you can see there that as I press the first one's thing, now as I press again, then another one will come in, then another one, then another one. So you can make some quite complex patterns with these. Uh, and I mean, these would be very useful for, for instance, triggering um, a drum module, if I had some drum module sounds or something like that. So these first two are just uh, working the way that I describe, you say this one is the same sort of thing. It's the only difference here is that the I've got it, you know, working in a more circular fashion. Um, and then this one here, um, I've actually done it in such a way that, as well as having the gate outs, you've uh, you can also attenuate each one of those with these little micro pots, and that's quite good because it means that you can have voltages coming out um, that are, you know, you can preset to whatever value. So I'll just patch in an oscillator into the output mixer here one of these outputs here I'll plug that into the 
CV1 in. No. Hopefully that explains what's going on there. And you can see you can get some quite nice rhythmic patterns going with that. Then this little module here is uh, a little, um, as you can see, it's another little thing I built um, from circuit diagrams available on the internet. And that's just a straight um, LFO. And again, I'll uh, patch in a oscillator and then I'll patch the LFO into the oscillator. And that circuit was built just for pennies, really. I mean, it's just a, it's a, a 4069 chip, if I remember correctly. And I'm only using one half of it, about two or three other components. And you've got a nice little uh, um, sine or triangle LFO there. This fella here is a passive ring modulator. So if I take uh, uh, two signals, it's, Put a signal into that and i'll also take a signal from another oscillator put that in there and then the output of that can go into my Classic uh, ring modulation. It's passive. Again, it was per, it was per built for very little outlay. Um, and people ask me about these panels I use. That's just because I had a, a off cut of some acrylic sheet. And sometimes I use the acrylic clear like this. Sometimes I'll paint the back of it as I have with this one. And if you look at this unit down here, which we'll look at later, sometimes I'll just color color the acrylic with um, with a, a sharpie, and you get this nice sort of translucent color effect. So the, the, the acrylic is a little bit more flexible than you would hope for. But again, I'm not fussy about this, you know, the, this unit, another passive unit is a low plus, uh, low pass gate, which is just using some very cheap components. So if we just give this a no frequency signal there, again, I'll take the signal out for and patch that in to my output. So the low frequency so it's effectively giving you a, a voltage controlled amplifier. Okay this another passive so these three are all passive uh, units and this one is a home built passive Malt, so it's just basically three lots of uh, interconnected sockets, and each one also the, these top three can also connect down to the 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 ones here. So you can get it up to eight, up to eight uh, malts on one thing. Useful if you want to use a trigger uh, in more than one place. Um, if you're going to try and put voltages through it, then you will get some losses on uh, passive devices, which I think most people into Eurac understand.